Okay, today's problem asks the following. How do you predict the chemical formula of intermediate compounds on phase diagrams? In many phase diagrams, you'll see that they're written, and so it makes our life easy. Sometimes they're not written, or it's simply given a Greek letter, and so we would need to figure out what is the chemical formula that that position on the phase diagram corresponds to. So we'll show you two ways to do this. The first way is the easy way. If your graph is plotted in mole percent, then it's going to be very easy because if you have two components, pure SRO and pure NB2O5, the mole fraction is just going to tell you how many moles of each one come together to make the formula. What this means is that you can look at the graph and say, for example, this compound, that exists at 50 mole percent of SRO and 50 mole percent of NB2O5. Or in other words, for every one mole of SRO, you're going to be adding another mole of NB2O5. These formulas that land at exact spots like that make it very easy to predict the structure. It would just be SR, NB2O, and then this would be 5 plus 1. Or in other words, SR, NB2O6, which is exactly what we have there. Take a look at this one. This one's located at about 33 mole percent. 33 is about one third, meaning if you had three moles total, one of them is going to be from NB2O5, and two are going to be from SRO. So let's do that one. You'd have one mole of NB2O5, and you're going to have two moles of our SRO. So let's go ahead and add that up. It'd be SR2, NB2, O5 plus 2, O7. So SR2, NB2, O7. And sure enough, that's what we get. Same thing over here at 20%. 20% corresponds to a 1 to, well, 20% of something is 1 fifth of it. So you're going to have a 1 to 5 ratio. So for every 1 mole of NB2, O5, you're going to have 4 moles of SRO. And sure enough, you end up with SR4, NB2, O9. So if it's plotted in mole percent, that's the easy way to do it. Now you'll notice that some of these don't fall at really nice, easy to predict numbers ahead of time. In these cases, say that one, at that occurs at about maybe 72 mole percent. You'll need to do the following. 72 moles of NB2, O5. That means that you have 28 moles of SRO. And you would simply take the ratio of those and look for it to be close to an integer to figure this out. When you divide that, 72 divided by 28, we find it's actually about two and a half. 72 divided by 28 is almost two and a half. And since you can't have fractional numbers, we just multiply it all by two to figure out that, okay, for every two moles of SRO, you must have then five moles of NB205, and that's how you get the formula there. So when it's plotted in mole percent, these are relatively simple to predict the formulas. But what about when it's plotted as a weight fraction? Say, for example, in the mullite crystal system. Mullite is a very important ceramic as a refractory material, and it's a mixture of silica and alumina. If you look at the phase diagram here, the mullite occurs at about 70, maybe between 70 and 75 weight percent Al2O3. So let's just throw a number out. Let's say that it's happening right around 73 weight percent of Al2O3. How do we figure out what's the chemical formula of mullite? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Before, all we had to do was know what the moles were and take the ratio. Here, we don't have the moles, we have the weights, but we can turn weights into moles using the atomic mass. So let's go ahead and do so. 73 grams of Al2O3. We can turn this into moles by uh, dividing by its molecular weight. One mole of Al2O3. We know that there are 26.981 multiplied by two plus 15.999 times three grams. Plugging this into our calculator, we find that it's equal to 0 0.7159 moles. So that's how many moles of Al2O3 we have. Now we have to do the same thing for silica. We're going to say that we have 27 grams of silica. Again, that's just 100 minus the 73 that we knew uh, we had of aluminum. And we're going to do the same thing as before. 
we're going to divide it by its molecular weight, or in other words, in one mole of SiO2, we know that we have 28.085 plus 15.999 times 2 grams. Punching this into our calculator, we find that this is equal to 0 0.449 moles. So now we are ready to divide these two by one another to figure out our chemical formula. When we take 0 0.7159 and we divide it by 0 0.449, we get that this is approximately equal to 1.5. Or in other words, for every one mole of SiO2, we have one and a half moles of Al2O3. Since we normally write chemical formulas without these halves, we can go ahead and multiply both by two. Or in other words, for every two moles of SiO2, we're going to have three moles of Al2O3. And then you can write this out however you'd like. You can multiply it and distribute it. We could say, for example, Si2, um, Al6, and then add up the oxygen. There's four from the SiO2, plus nine, so that would be oxygen 13. And this is around the nominal formula for molite. Oftentimes, though, you'll simply see molite written as 2SiO2, 3 Al2O3.